Hey guys, Scott here again. Um, different video for you today. I figure I'm filming this kind of roughly the beginning, middle of December. So, and I paid all this money to have this coating of snow blown over my shoulder here, if you can see out my back door. <clears throat> so I thought I could kind of stay holiday based theme today. Um, I'm not gonna be doing a particular tasting today like I've done a lot of my other videos. Some of these beers I'm gonna be talking about today, which I will usually, most of them I'll pop over on my shoulder. Um, I've discussed in other videos, but I just thought I'd maybe kind of put together a, a list for your holiday season, some suggestions that I would make, um, maybe to mix it up a little bit differently than you do um, during the course of the year, um, and then some reasons why I kind of suggest these, these beers for you. So it's kind of beers are my, I don't want to say my top beers, but top beers for holiday season. But again, you know, as you usually, um, as I usually say in most of my videos, I make these suggestions, whatever you want to drink, drink, drink your local beer from your craft brewery, like Budweiser, Bud Light, whatever you want to do. But I'll, I'll kind of give you some reasonings, reasons why I, I suggest some of these beers. So I have them kind of broken up into, you know, slight categories here. So the first category I want to talk about is kind of beers that kind of can replace your champagne or your Osti, um, whether you're doing brunch, celebrating New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Um, so instead of just pulling out the Osti and champagne or making mimosas or whatever you like to mix on those days. This is going to be beers for replacing your champagne, maybe for brunch um, or anything else that you may want to think of uh, around the holidays that you're entertaining people. So the first beer I would bring up is, is wit beer. And I've done a video on wit beer, specifically Allagash White. And the reason why is, you know, that beer, you know, with any wheat beer, and again, any wheat beer that you want to use, if you like Shock Top or you like um, Blue Moon, you know, wheat beers are, are very effervescent usually. They're, you know, bread doughy. The malt profile is very light. Um, uh, wheat beer, as you go back to my wheat beer video, looks very pale. Um, and it's not going to overpower too many things. <clears throat> and if you like it, I don't like to put a lot of fruit in my beer, you know, like orange slices and... Um, purees and things like that, but those would be a perfect canvas for putting fruit in your beer. Um, so whether you want to put a little raspberry puree or orange or um, grapefruit, whatever you want to do, they, they, these beers will serve as a canvas for that. So wit beer is a perfect example of that. It has some coriander in there too. Um, specific brands, I mean, Someone posted to me last night a beer that they had. It was a wit beer. Um, I believe it was Omegan, which is up here in New York, a um, brewery that does a lot of Belgian-style beers. But whatever white beer you want to do. But Ho Garden is a good one. You know, it's usually pretty economical, easy to get. Pick up a 12-pack of it. Allagash White is another example of a wit beer that I would, I would use. And again, if you want to infuse it with fruit for the holidays, cranberries, things like that, again, perfect canvas for it. Another one um, is Cezanne DuPont, um, is a Cezanne. I'm not going to go into a lot of the history on this video with these. I have some coming that I'm going to hope to be able to do a specific vi video on there. But again, Cezanne DuPont, if you have it, it's almost like when I drink it, it's almost like champagne. It's very highly attenuated, meaning there's not a lot of sweetness, residual sweetness to it. It's very dry, like champagne or, or many Osties are. Um, so Cezanne DuPont... It's like a kind of a green bottle. You'll see it in most of your stores in the Belgian section. Um, so I'm not going to dive too much into the history there. But again, it can be served as a canvas. You want to throw some fruit in there. That's great too. Hefeweizen, German Hefeweizen or Weiss beer um, is great. Again, because that doughy, bread dough, white bread, floury type of malt profile, it's not going to dominate a lot of things at your you know, New Year's Day brunch or Christmas morning uh, breakfast. Um, but again, any wheat beer that you want to use would work also. Um, Shandies, okay, or Rattlers. Germans use the term Rattler. It's usually a Rattler is a mix between a Pilsner beer, which you know is kind of a lighter style beer, a little bitterness from there, as well as some fruit juice, like grapefruit juice. I know Bitburger makes one that I see readily in my local beer store. Um, or shandies, which, you know, they usually, again, have... Shandy is more of the U.S. I, I interpret more of a U.S. Uh, vernacular for a Rattler, a German Rattler. Um, and again, it's usually 50-50 between like a Pilsner, 
lifestyle beer and some type of fruit juice, grapefruit. And like I just mentioned, Bitburger is one of them. That's a pretty common brand that I think I just bought about a year ago. So you kind of get that fruitiness beer. It's, it, you know, it's so, it's not like you're just sitting at a tailgate party at eight o'clock in the morning drinking, you know, beer. Um, the uh, fruited lambics, okay, uh, go great for brunches and maybe mixing up your champagne. Um, Lindemans is a, a popular one. Uh, you know, it's a little sweeter than I like. Or if you see one that's O U D E oud, it's more traditional. They actually put the, the beer on the fruit itself. Some of them are like Lindemans is like back sweetened with puree and things like that. Both are very good, um, very effervescent, carbonated. Um, you know, sparkling. So again, it can kind of replace your Asti or your champagne, which I would suggest if you wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, you pour it into a champagne glass too. I mean, you don't have to use your traditional beer glasses if you want to kind of keep it a little bit more fancier. Um, if you're having like at your brunch, just kind of a regular breakfast, you know, uh, when I say regular breakfast, your bacons, your eggs, you know, you know, uh, croissants, things like that. Another beer you may want to think about is rock beer, which is smoked beer, um, specifically out of uh, Germany, but Schlenkerla, uh, S-C-H. Again, I'll try to have it pop up on my shoulder. But you can always message me. It is a smoked beer. Um, you get the rock beer, um, Schlenkerla Helles. Helles means white um, in German. And so it's the lighter style beer, but it has a little smokiness to it. So I find it would complement like almost like if you were putting bacon into things, um, kind of that smoky flavor. And the Helles is a lighter one um, because they do make Schlenkerla makes in Mertzen, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, which is a darker, it's kind of like your Oktoberfest beer, but it's smoked. Um, so I feel like complementing breakfast, the, the smoke beer fills in. And I, I know, um, there are other smoke beers that guys make, uh, you know, microbreweries make. So if any type of smoke beer would be good. Uh, uh, what is it? Anchorage uh, Brewing Company, in, at a, or Alaska Brewing Company, I believe, in Anchorage, uh, makes a smoke porter, darker style, obviously, beer. So the, the Schlenkerla rock beers um, are popular. I'm going to do a whole segment on rock beer one day. Um, if you're having more of a rich breakfast, like, you know, you're having your pancakes or your... Um, you know, a lot of cheeses and um, <clears throat> maybe heavy waffles with syrups and things like that. You may want to think of um, things like maybe uh, Kentucky breakfast stout from Founders, a little richer beer. You know, um, again, may not appeal to many people at eight, nine o'clock in the morning having a beer, but these are more, um, you know, rich, may complement some of those richer dishes with syrups and things like that. You know, um, French toast with all the fixings on there, caramel and stuff. But uh, Founders Kentucky Breakfast Stout has a little vanilla in it, a um, little higher alcohol percentage, roughly 11%. I'm not gonna go through a lot of specs on these beers today, but um, most of them are uh, a higher percentage in alcohol. Um, what else? Um, cream stouts. I did a video on cream stout or milk stout. Um, because of the body to them and the lactose and the creaminess, they may complement a lot of your richer um, waffles, pancakes with syrups and things like that. So something you may want to mix up, you know, your, your guests, if you have company, may be looking at you like funny, like what kind of, you know, I'm drinking beer for breakfast, but these type of beers are, I think, complement things a little bit better. Um, you know, as you advance through your day for dinner, okay, if you're having like poultry dinner, like maybe turkey or chicken or something, you know, lighter, um, again, you don't know you have to have poultry and have these beers. You can have it with other dishes, but something like a, what they call Belgian Golden Strong Ale. Um, I've mentioned them in, again, some videos. Delirium Tremens, um, which is one. They look like Pilsners. I've, I've talked about them. They're usually highly carbonated, very effervescent, most of the time very dry. They are high alcohol content. They're, you know, anywhere from 8 to 11, 12%. They probably get an average around that 10%. Um, palate cleansing. Um, white, you know, cleanse your palate for the next bite of food. Um, not very heavy bodied. Again, they drink like they're 2%, even though they are a little higher in alcohol. Duvel, okay, it is pronounced Duvel, not Duvel, D-U-V-E-L. Again, I'll try to have a pop over on my Parat, um, which again, I'm not, that one I'm not sure if I pronounce properly. That's P-I-R-A-A-T. Again, they're all Belgian Golden Strong. 
So if you do have that app that I told you, recommended you to have with the Brewers Judge Certification Program app on your phone, and you look under Belgian Golden Strong, you can see some of the examples um, with them. But they usually, they pour like their champagne too. And again, I didn't mention them as a replacement for champagne, but if you wanted to use a Belgian Golden Strong and do the same thing, you want to be jazz it up with fruit and drop fruit in there, that would be the style that I would do it with if you were going to go on the Belgian style. I always, when in doubt with food pairings, is when in doubt go with Belgian uh, beers because they're usually more carbonated. A lot of them are, are uh, bottle conditioned, so the carbonation level is very high. They're palate cleansing, great for most dishes. Um, or just a German Pilsner, too, you know, for poultry dishes. You know, they've got enough bitterness, hot bitterness, to complement your poultry chicken type dishes if you're serving them at the holiday times. Um, if you're going with something like pork or beef, I still would kind of stay or recommend more on the error on the side of Belgian dishes, but I'd go with a double, and it is not Dubel, it's double, D-U-B-B-E-L, that's how you pronounce it properly. Um, you know, so your Rochefort 6 in your Belgian section, that's the double. Remember, the 8 and the 12 is the Belgian Dark Strong, which I would recommend more for, like, after dinner, sitting by the fireside. Those are going to be sitting around close to 10% alcohol, but the double is going to hold up to the Maillard and, and the deeper rich pork, with, if, even if you're doing like cranberry um, sauces and, and stuff with some of your dishes with your pork and your beef, or if you're doing lamb, you know, a double is going to do a little bit better uh, with that. Your shime with the red cap is another double. Um, Westmala makes a double. Um, so you go to your Belgian section. Again, the reason why I, I always seem to gravitate with dishes with, with the uh, Belgian styles, because they're, again, highly carbonated. Um, they do very well. Even a Belgian triple that has a little bit more um, uh, bitterness than a lot of other Belgian styles or German, you know, not necessarily German style, but other Belgian styles, because they're usually a little more highly hopped, is going to be great for palate cleansing and, and complement a lot of your beef, um, braised meats and things like that. Um, uh, at, at dinner, so pork and, and beef dishes. Um, but again, you can go with any, any beer that you like to enjoy. I, you know, um, but Westmala, your doubles. Then after dinner, okay, these are the beers that I would kind of suggest uh, if you're sitting by the fire. You know, I've mentioned this in a couple of videos. You know, you sit by the fire, you're sipping it. This is barley wine season. This is imperial stout season. So even the ones I don't recommend, specifically the brands, if you have your local microbrewery, grab a crowler of it um, and just sip it after dinner instead of having port necessarily or, um, you know, limoncello. And, you know, even though I recommend those types of drinks also, or your single malt scotches, um, go with something like um, your, your Sierra Nevada Norwal. Um, again, I'll try to have them pop up on my shoulder, which is Imperial Stout. North Coast Old Rasputin. I spoke specifically about that beer one time, and I'm going to have some hopefully delivered here to specifically do it. So your Imperial Stouts, they're all going to be sitting around 10% alcohol, so, you know, so consume carefully. Um, like I said, Severe Nevada Bigfoot. Uh, Anchor's Old Foghorn is another barley wine. Um, uh, again, and make sure I didn't miss something on the Imperial Stout side. Sierra Nevada Norwal, North Coast Out Rasputin. Then going back to your Belgian style, St. Bernardus makes, you know, the regular St. Bernardus um, ABT 12. It's kind of a, it's a Belgian dark strong. Go on your app, put in Belgian dark strong. Again, very dark. It's going to have dark fruit flavors, cherry, um, fig, raisin, kind of like a rum raisin type of uh, uh, deep, rich, dark fruit type flavors in there. St. Bernardus also makes a Christmas ale that's going to have more of your Christmas spices in there, which, which is actually, actually very nice. It's going to have, um, you know, more of almond, cherry, dark fruit kind of flavors there too, which is again, St. Bernardus Christmas ale, um, which is very, you know, very nice beer to have. I haven't had that in about a year or two. I may even pick up a bottle for myself um, this year. So it's going to have the toffee almond um, beers. The um, other ones, Delirium Noel. Okay, like singing the song, Noel. Um, it's gonna have caramel, dry, dark fruit flavors in there. Um, still gonna have those peppery phenols for, from those Belgian uh, yeast strains. So that's also very nice to have. So um, Anchor Christmas Ale has been around for many years. 
Uh, they're going to have, you know, that alcoholic fruitiness to it. Cinnamon, caramel flavors. Again, think of dark fruit. Some people interpret little like fig, um, uh, you know, rum soaked raisin, like I said to it. Uh, so Delirium Noel, Anchor Christmas Ale, as I said, St. Bernardus makes a uh, Christmas one. It almost, it looks like there's a monk on the front cover wearing a uh, Santa hat on there. Um, Trogues, Mad Elf is one that's been around for a while. Um, has honey flavors, cherries, okay? Christmas spices in it too. Again, all these that I'm mentioning are roughly, you know, 10% to 11% alcohol. So again, ones you're gonna sip by the fire, sip after dinner, um, something different than your typical aperitivo um, or after dinner drink that you're going to have like port and things like that. Again, just to try to mix things up. Um, I think I did mention the Delirium Noel, the clove, peppery phenol, cinnamon, dark fruit, alcoholic fruitiness uh, with fig, raisin, um, uh, anything along those lines. Um, Chimay Grand Reserve, okay, that's a Belgian dark strong. It's not going to be spiced like your St. Bernardus is going to be spiced uh, with Christmas spices, but it's, again, fig, that, that's the blue cap uh, from Chimay. Fig, uh, raisin, um, again, you're still sitting around 10% alcohol, so you're going to be serving these again in probably like snifter glasses that you could have. You can even, put, listen, put them in champagne glasses, but they're going to be very dark looking beers too, which, so it's up to you. Um, Rochefort, the eight or 10 is written right on the bottle. Um, those are gonna be again, sitting around 10, 13, 12% alcohol. Those are Belgian dark strongs for those particular brands. So you get the idea, um, or again, any beer of your choice that you feel would complement things. So again, hopefully guys, that's something to maybe think outside the box a little bit with the holiday season. Hopefully you can see my snow over my shoulder. The guys just left blowing it here a few minutes ago. Um, so replacement for your champagnes, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, things for your brunches uh, that I mentioned again earlier on in the video, kind of go lighter style wheat beers. If you want going lighter with your dishes, maybe a little darker dish, uh, dishes with your stouts, your porters, um, with spices. I didn't mention a million different brands because if you're at the shelf and you're looking, um, oh, I didn't mention coffee-infused uh, stouts and porters for some of your richer dishes in the morning. So again, um, for your brunches and things like that, perfect time of the year to pull those out. There's many brands out there all across the country from microbreweries over the country. So you kind of have to just do a little shopping around. Um, but your wheat beers, your stouts, your porters, after dinners, your barley wine season, your imperial, imperial stout seasons. Um, uh, your lambics are great with fruits. Um, and that's it, guys. So hopefully that, you know, gives you a little guidance if you wanted to kind of, you know, shock your guests a little bit at Christmas time, holiday time, um, at your brunches, New Year's Day, morning things to think differently. I'll try to get as many over my shoulder as I can. Um, so until next time, if I don't uh, see any of you personally, have a great holiday season, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate. And... Um, Feel free to, you know, post comments either on YouTube or Facebook if you like some specifics. If you know my cell number, feel free to message me if you like specific suggestions. All right, guys, have a great holidays. Take care. Till next time.